In this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the hidden dangers of cheap green lasers. And before I even begin this video, I have to give a huge shout out, hats off to Brainiac. He did a great video covering this that really inspired me to do my own version of it. So all credit goes to him for this. He set up this entire experiment and gave me the entire idea. So I'm going to link him in the video description. Definitely go and check out that video as well. I just kind of wanted to make my own version of it for the people that are into lasers and follow my channel. So I'm going to be talking about the hidden dangers of green lasers and DPSS lasers in general. And I'm not going to go super into the science of it because I think there's plenty of great videos and information out there that does. But essentially your normal hobbyist laser pointer is either going to be a direct diode or a DPSS. So a direct diode is fairly simple. It's the one you see on the right hand side here, the one that's more of a forest. Um, kind of green closer to a bluish looking green and a direct diode is just putting out the one color it is a diode that is producing that one color so for example this 520 nanometer green it's only producing that one color now some colors like this lime green that you see on the left hand side here 532 nanometers is the wavelength they can't be produced with a diode we just don't have the technology of the diodes to produce that color yet so they're produced by dpss diode pumped solid state lasers now the wavelengths that are visible to the human eye sit between 400 and 700 roughly but you can produce certain colors by using an infrared laser which is above the 700 nanometer mark and manipulating it and converting it through various methods which dpss does and i'm not going to go too into that science but Basically, the DPSS laser is starting with an invisible IR diode, something like 808 nanometers. It is pumping it through some type of medium, like a crystal, a very specific crystal made for this specific use, and that will help convert it to the visible color of 532 nanometers. Now, all of that IR light that's starting off in that original diode isn't being completely lost, so you are converting that light into the 532 but you're also still keeping some of that infrared in the beam as well so a properly made laser should have if it's going to be a dpss an ir filter so that all you're getting is that visible light and not the infrared as well and this is key because typically the laser safety glasses you have won't be protecting you from infrared light they'll be specifically made for certain visible spectrums like 405 nanometers to 532 or something like that just some some section of visible light but it's not going to also be manufactured for invisible light so you aren't truly going to be protected if you have some invisible light in your beam as well so that's basically why these lasers can be dangerous and i'm going to demonstrate for you just how brainiac demonstrated it so brainiac 75 all credit goes to him go check out his video but basically what i have here I have an IR pass lens, which is going to block out all the visible light between 400 and 700 nanometers and only let infrared light through. I have an IR filter, which is going to let the visible light through and not let the IR light through. And then I have this IR detection card. When I point it at that little orange rectangle, if there's infrared detected, you'll see in little orange dot, we'll actually be able to see the infrared light. So if you wanted to do this yourself, set up this little experiment, I got all of this equipment for around $40 to $50. The most expensive thing is really just one of those detection cards, but I'll put links to all of that in the video description down below. And what I'm showing you guys right here, just a little demonstration, I have just um, using like a little speaker as my backdrop here, but I'm just going to show you how these lens work. The IR pass filter, if I shine this little 532 nanometer laser at it, we should see no visible light coming through on the other side. That, that dark IR pass filter should only let infrared light through and not visible light. And we won't be able to see the infrared yet because I'm not using that detection card. But you can see right here, no visible light comes through. And then on the other one, the IR filter, that one's going to let visible light through and it's not going to let infrared light through. So you can see we can see the visible light now. Once again, we would need that card to detect if infrared is present. And this is what it would look like. What I'm using right here is a 980 nanometer infrared laser, and that's what it's going to look like on the card, that little orange dot. Now, if I put the little IR filter in front of it, you're going to see the orange dot does not appear when the laser is going through the lens. And that is because that is filtering out the infrared light, and because this laser is only infrared light, there's no other light to come through. 
So that is the basis of this experiment. I'm now going to demonstrate with some of the lasers for you. This is a cheap laser pen, 532 nanometer green, 10 milliwatts. You can find these all over eBay and even at some flea markets and convenience stores. And always make sure you use laser safety glasses when doing anything like this. But right away, you guys are able to see that this one is leaking infrared light. I'm using the IR pass filter to block out the visible light and only let the IR through. And the detection card is telling us that there is infrared light. So that would indicate that these cheap little green pens, they do not have an IR filter. They are leaking infrared light. Now, if I threw the IR filter in front of that, you're going to see the detection card does not show anything because we are now filtering out the visible light and the infrared light as well. So the next one I'm going to show you is another 532. This one's rated at 35 milliwatts, and this one is, a, I believe it's typically called a military laser on eBay, but pretty much the same concept, just a little bit stronger. And this one is going to pretty much have the same result. You're going to see that orange dot is showing up on the detector card. This one is also leaking infrared light as well as visible light. So the next one I'm going to show you guys, probably the most common laser 532 laser sold on eBay or anywhere is the laser 301 slash laser 303. They're pretty much the same thing, but this one is about 90 milliwatts to 100 milliwatts. And you wouldn't be surprised to know that this one does the same exact thing. There is no IR filter in any of these. It is leaking infrared light. So if you had some, some laser safety glasses that were rated for a 532 nanometer laser, unless they are very expensive ones that you specifically bought to block out infrared too, chances are they probably aren't going to block out infrared. And I can actually demonstrate that for you right now with these cheap little glasses that you get with pretty much any laser you buy on eBay. You can see once I use that IR pass filter to block out the visible light, the IR is still leaking through these glasses. Now I can do this with the Wicked Lasers laser glasses which are a little bit more expensive and I get the same result. The IR is still leaking through. Now these laser glasses are rated to block the 532 nanometer color. And both of these did a pretty good job at it. I was able to shine all three of those green lasers directly at them, and none of the green light made it through. However, these are not intended to block IR, so if you did somehow accidentally take a direct beam hit to the eye with one of these, it's not going to block out the infrared light. And that's the hidden danger that this video is intended to cover. Now, I can take a more expensive laser, something like this Spider 2 BX, now this was made like 10 years ago, circa 2007, 2008. And even this one has an IR filter in it. They knew even back then to put an IR filter in this because some of that IR light was gonna leak out. And you can see right here, the detector card is not detecting any infrared light from this one. And this one is 473 nanometer blue. And it's about 10 to 15 milliwatts, I think. It's been a little while since I LPM this one, but the next one I'm going to show you guys is the sister laser to this one. It's the Spider 2 GX, the 532 nanometer version of it. This one is about 235 milliwatts, and this one as well has an IR filter in it. No infrared light is leaking through. That little dot you do see there is actually green. It's not orange from the detector card. It looks like a little bit of the green visible light is leaking through this pass filter. Maybe this pass filter is not rated for this, this power of laser, but that is not orange. It is not infrared being detected. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys here is a direct diode laser, just to demonstrate to you that there is also no IR. This is a 520 nanometer, 150 milliwatt direct diode laser. And you're gonna see here there is no infrared light detected at all. And that's because the direct diode process doesn't use the infrared pump diode. Now, what does this all mean? Basically, you want to have laser goggles that protect you from the infrared light, but you have three options here to protect yourself if you are going to use these cheap green lasers. The first option and the cheapest option would be to just go with a direct diode substitute. So if you were looking to get a green laser, buy a 520 nanometer instead of a 532. The color difference isn't that huge. Yeah, the beam will probably be a bit thicker, but you won't have to deal with any invisible IR light or even the chance of it. Now, if you were looking to get a blue at 473 nanometers, there is the direct diode substitute of a 470 nanometer diode, which is pretty much very, very similar. 
Now the only instance where I could see you wouldn't really be able to get a substitute is the yellow colors, the 593 and the 589 because they haven't really developed the diodes for the yellow color yet, but not many hobbyists are looking to get those unless they have a serious use for them. Now option number two would be about eight to ten dollars and it would require a little bit of work but you could just buy an IR filter like the one I used in this video and you could attach it to your laser like a laser 303 or you might have to really do some working with it if you were using one of those pen style lasers but that is an option as well to filter out all of the IR light. And option number three would be to just buy a higher quality laser that advertises that it has an IR filter in it. You can read some of the reviews on laserpointerforums.com to find out what lasers might include an IR filter, but an option would be to just dish out a little bit more money to get a 532 or a 473 that does have an IR filter in it. Now there is a fourth option, you could go and spend some serious money on a pair of laser goggles that protects you from that visible wavelength of 532 or whatever you're looking for as well as the IR. However, that'll probably be the most expensive option out of the four, and if I really had to suggest any of these to you guys, I'd say just either go with a direct diode laser or buy yourself a cheap little IR filter and attach it to your laser. But anyways, that's going to wrap up this video. Once again, big shout out to Brainiac75 for the great idea on this video. All credit goes to him. I also have to apologize for the length of this video. I wanted to try to keep it down to five or six minutes, but it really just didn't end up working out. Um, if you found this entertaining or informative in any way, hit that like button down below. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for lots of awesome laser content just like this. And as always, thank you for watching.